We're blessed to be gathered here on Tuesday, August 11th, 2015 for the morning uh, commission meeting of, for Putnam County. Welcome to each of you, our constituents, and to our colleagues and administrators. Thank you all for being here. The Reverend Chad Perry is with us this morning from the River Community Church to lead us in our invocation. Commissioner Pellicer will lead uh, in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's all stand together. Let's pray together. Father God, we love you and we thank you for loving us and for leading us and guiding us. And we're so grateful for uh, Putnam County and the fact that it still belongs to you. Your word declares that the earth and all it contains belongs to you. It also tells us that if we need any help governing it according to your principles, all we have to do is humble ourselves and ask and you will freely give it. So that's what we do today, Father. We humble ourselves, asking for your help. Give us wisdom and guidance as we govern this place that belongs to you. Have your way in and through each one of us. Help us to make good decisions and to celebrate when we need to celebrate, cry when we need to cry, be strong when we need to be strong. In the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you, Pastor Chad. Commissioners, you should have received and reviewed the July 28, 2015 uh, minutes. What is your pleasure? Move approval, sir. Second. Proper motion and a second for approval of the July 28th regular meeting. Further discussion? Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you so much. At this time, we will recess the Board of Commissioners and convene uh, the Port Authority. Port Authority members, you should have received the minutes from November 25th, 2014. What is your pleasure? Move approval, Mr. Chair. Second. A proper motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Um, the item on the Port Authority's agenda is the acceptance of transfer of ownership of crane from Veritas Steel. And uh, the administrator, uh, certainly I would like for you, just for the sake of the record, to um, kind of give us a little bit of historical background on the um, crane. Yes, sir. I'd be happy to. Uh, there is a piece of equipment out at the barge port uh, just that sits at the edge of the water right by the right by the dock uh, near near the uh, warehouse that is owned by the county uh, that piece of equipment is a crane that was uh, previously owned by the Port Authority and was transferred to the company that was the precursor to PDM steel uh, by the Port Authority the circumstances of which I am not familiar with because that predates me uh, however uh, Veritas Steel now has made the determination that uh, it does not uh, wish to retain ownership of that crane any longer and uh, has offered it back to the county at, uh, at, at no cost, of course. Uh, the county has, has determined uh, with input from uh, businesses, nearby businesses, particularly uh, Newcastle Marine, that uh, that, that, that crane still has uh, some value and it could be an asset to the port uh, that they have used it, that that particular business has used it in the past and would probably have uh, some need for it uh, perhaps in the future. Uh, we, we think that perhaps it could be uh, something that would remain an asset to the port. Uh, we know, of course, that uh, it would have to be inspected and may need some work in order to bring it into uh, working condition in the future. Um, if that cost became uh, to, to bring it into working condition was cost prohibitive uh, for the county, of course, we could always make a determination at some point to declare a surplus and, and, and be rid of it. But if we're going to get ownership of it at no cost, uh, you know, we have had negotiations with Veritas Steel and the uh, county attorney has worked with uh, attorneys from Veritas and they've moved it up the corporate ladder and gotten approval all the way to transfer it to the county. So we see. We just think that it's uh, appropriate for the county to assume ownership of it at this point uh, uh, and evaluate use of it in the future. All right. Thank you very kindly. Commissioner Lytle. 
Um, I, would, I invited Brian Keith from Newcastle Marine. Um, he's going to serve as a historian this morning. If Brian, if you could come to the podium and give your opinion of the crane. Um, I uh, ha thought this was an asset to the uh, port being a rail spur and a crane, and, and, and Brian agrees and take it from there, sir. Brian Keith, Newcastle Shipyards, 195 Comfort Road, Palatka. Um, we've been at that site for about the last 15, 18 years. Um, we were actually in one of the, we rented the county building uh, when we started at that site. The crane's been there the whole time. Uh, Sheffield Steel had purchased it from the county um, when they were there, and there was an agreement at that time that it would be open for use for other businesses that were going to use it or anybody that was coming in. Um, the port, as I've discussed with some of you before, is I think is a, a jewel in the rough. It's a very valuable asset for the county. The infrastructure that's already there under the crane, that foundation is a huge amount of money. Um, so if you, and, and you could scrap the crane if it, like, like um, they said, is if it's going to cost a lot of money to repair it, and from what I've seen, it's, it was working when they stopped using it. Uh, it needs a coat of paint. We had been asked to give them a quote for a coat of paint, and that was the only problem with it the last time it was used. But, um, you know, it could, be, it could be scrapped. If you're getting it for nothing, I, I think it's a no-brainer to go ahead and get, the, get this crane. And, uh, and then make a determination from there. Mr. Keith, you shared with me um, the fact that the arm was removed just a few years ago and updated from 100 ton to 150 ton. About how long was that? That's probably been five years ago, maybe six years ago. It, um, the, the arm was damaged and the crane boom and uh, PDM had it removed, had it upgraded from 100 ton to 150 ton. They replaced the winch that was on it with a, with a newer model winch. It's got an Ameri a large American winch on it now. So uh, the county wouldn't even need to retain a, a crane operator. If, if there was going to be somebody who was going to come in to use it, they could, you'd have t ample time to uh, just go rent a crane operator. It costs you a couple hundred bucks, and then you just you pass that along uh, and, and make a profit off of it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Keith. Any further discussion from the Port Authority members? Answered all my questions, sir. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Keith, for being here. Thank you so very much. We have a recommendation to accept the transfer of ownership of the crane. Move approval, Mr. Sure. Second. We have a proper motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion carries. At this time, we will entertain a motion to adjourn the Port Authority. So moved. moved. Proper motion, second. second. Port Authority is adjourned. We will reconvene the board meeting. Item four on the agenda is public comment. This portion of the agenda is designed to allow our citizens an opportunity to bring matters to our attention. Uh, it is not reasonable to expect that the board will engage in debate <coughs> or deliberation about matters on which the board has received no prior information as part of the agenda. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Public comment cards are conveniently placed at both entrances. Um, meeting room entrances and should be submitted prior to the meeting. This is a request on our part. It's not a mandate, but it does give us an opportunity to do follow-up with those who are speaking to us. You can pass those to the deputy clerk, and she certainly will make sure that they get, um, get to us. Um, I do want to say that in some of our meetings, uh, our citizens uh, do become, um, in, in many cases, engaged in what they are really standing for. We do not have an issue or problem uh, with that. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. We equally have um, the desire, and it is important that we give you the mutual respect at any point in time uh, that we are violating parliamentary procedures, normally the chair. Uh, does intervene to, to make sure that uh, we maintain order because we're just as passionate about uh, positions that, that we believe in, uh, but at all, with all due respect, uh, mutual respect is, is the rule of the day and uh, the pledge of civility. We will not again uh, engage in heated matters that would cause us to uh, lead to potential disrespect of each other. Mr. Tyrone Finley, 160 Lewisboro Road, East Palatka. Uh, has some questions. Um, if you'll come forward uh, concerning the park on Putnam County Boulevard and uh, some future plans, uh, you represent 
organization, hand in hand, community services. Is that right? Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Finley. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing Good great. Board. Thank you. Yes, I would just like to know what are the future plans for it. I see you're making the bike trail adjacent to it. Yes, sir. And I'm just wondering what y'all going to plan to do at the park. Okay. Um, Any our, plans? Our, well, our leadership from Public Works would certainly be delighted to sit down uh, with you and give you an overview of, of, of the plan. Of, of course, the rail to trail is a, is a state project, and there's a trailhead and some other things specifically opening up Lewis Brewer Road so that it comes all the way across cul-de-sac at the end of the part that is proposed to be closed and um, and so I'm sure with this information that you've given us that they would be delighted uh, to sit down and have that discussion so that you and your organization and the community the general community will, will kind of get an idea and, and maybe um, help give us some input as to what you would like to see as well okay right. okay thank you so much for coming mr. Finley thank you for hearing me. okay uh, miss Diana I want to make sure I say your name Dear Hag, um, it's important to say names right. Uh, there, 117 Ranchwood Road in Crescent City, um, and you want to just share some comments about the noise ordinance problems that you come on, come forward, Miss Miss Diana. Um, I did not realize the health issues that you were going to have a, a meeting on this on the 25th, but I decided to come up. Um, health issues, I would have been here sooner. Yes, ma'am. Um, I live outside of the Crescent City limits. Um, I'm disabled, as you can tell, and normally after therapy in the after afternoons, I sleep. My husband drives from Crescent City to St. Augustine every day. He's been doing it for 31 years. He's a 12-hour shift worker. Yes, ma'am. My problem is uh, for the past year, I have had a problem of trying to talk to the sheriff, have been given the brush off. When I called the commission's office, they said told me that they didn't handle the, the sheriff to call the governor, uh, the government, uh, excuse me, the governor, excuse me, I'm nervous, uh, called the governor's office. They told me that they didn't know how to talk to, but since the sheriff was an elected official, that he answered to the community and supposed to answer to the commission. Um, Major Harold has taken the time to come out to my house, talk to me about the problem. I said, this is not just an on once in a while problem uh, I have to call the, the sheriff's department three to six times a week. Um, I had read your comment where a person had um, mentioned about the renegades. That's a different, different thing you said about compromise. I tried to be civil. My family was the first people in this little subdivision. Been out there for 60 years. It used to be a nice, quiet neighborhood. And I speak, my neighbors come to me because they know I will speak for them because they're afraid. A lot of the people in my neighborhood on my particular street is elderly. Um, I have had, I went to the neighbor, which is a block away. I had a deputy sheriff go with me for my own safety and politely asked him, explain to him. I said, my husband's a shift worker. He needs to sleep. He could be in an accident or lose his job because of loss of sleep. And the person replied, well, I'm gonna play my music as loud as I want to and there's nothing, you're not gonna stop me, there's nothing you can do about it. And the deputy sheriff politely said, when you come out here, when I'm called, you're disturbing the peace. And that's still against the law, even though it's a misdemeanor. My comment is that if you move into somebody's neighborhood, please respect the people that you're moving in. I mean, this is a 24 seven problem. And I mean, if, if y'all put yourself, like you said, in my shoes, being kept awake 24 seven because people want to party and play their music. And I had a problem which needs to be, I will give you an incident, I know my time's running out, that um, I had this person, because I have actually gotten my car to find out where the music is coming from or I could let the officers know. This person was a half a mile down my road. It was mid after midnight, I called the sheriff's department the second time and said, I have a right to sign a citation. I want to sign a citation against this person. Enough's enough. People are trying to sleep. Deputy come out to the house and I know these people. I'm not going to tell them to turn their music down. You got two, you got three choices. You can either close your windows, which my windows are closed with the air conditioner going, turn up your TV or put earplugs in. This was by a deputy. I called the supervisor, the supervisor reluctantly had the person do the citation 
which she did, and I had the person paid the, the fine. I had not had a problem with that particular person. The other person, it's been ongoing, had the same thing. The supervisor come out there along with another deputy, and this tried to intimidate me because he had his hand on his billy club and was like, well, I said, can you not hear this? This is two blocks away. Yes, I can hear it, but I think if you go in your house and close the door, you can't hear it. I politely invited all three officers to come in my house and close the door. And reluctantly, again, they did the citation. My thing is, is please, I, something's got to be done. I don't want to see tempers being flared. I don't want my neighborhood turning into Java Road, and I don't want anybody to get shot or hurt. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Your request is not falling on deaf ears. Uh, the ordinance that is being proposed uh, does take into consideration all of the testimony that we have had up to date. And what you're saying to us is certainly synonymous with what we have been uh, hearing uh, over uh, these weeks and months there. Um, the, the thing that the commission always aim for is for peaceable resolutions and things of that nature, Some, but it does take willing parties. Yes, when sir. we have people that are uh, infracting or violating uh, others' space, whether it's, you know, noise or, or whether it's, you know, trespassing on property and things of that nature, that's what the law is for. Uh, the Sheriff's Department does need uh, a revised ordinance so that there can be some consistency in the enforcement side. Uh, when it comes down to the specific officers uh, who may not have the level of sensitivity, it's always easy to maintain the name, contact the supervisors so that they can handle it accordingly. We try to understand where we stand in all of this as legislators, as lawmakers, and, and creating the tools that are necessary so that our citizens are not basically victimized in their own homes. And so if you'll stay tuned to, to what is happening, it's in the pipeline now, and over the next couple of weeks when we meet again uh, there, we will be vetting uh, a revised ordinance and then preparing it for the books. And then that way, the enforcement side will have opportunity to, uh, uh, to get some results. And so if you hang in there with us, uh, we're not asking anyone to be miserable indefinitely in their homes. That is certainly not fair. I agree. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for coming. Ms. Faye Sparkman, you're next, 103 Flamingo Boulevard, Interlocking. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My, my favorite time of the day is when I see what color coat he's wearing. Yeah, we were, we were all <laughs> anticipating as well. Four questions, and I'd like to be able to ask the questions first, and if you want to answer them, okay. If not, that's fine, too. My first question is, last week I read in the paper that you hired an attorney, and that's great, but why wasn't it brought before the board and all five of you vote on it other than just two people? That's my first question. My second question is, how many of you know that you give all your employees um, called experience pay raise every year. Most of them are $5,000 a year. My second question is, why are we paying the Chamber of Commerce $6,000 a month? They're supposed to be getting this job and I haven't seen any. My last question is in the paperwork I gave you about 10 months ago on the Florida Sunshine Law is the Board of County Commissioners, and this was strictly for Putnam County, has things they're supposed to do. One of them um, is background checks. How many of you have done the background checks on all your employees? So when I'm done today, I will hand this paperwork to Tony, and it's private. I want you all to get a copy of the first two pages of this and make sure you read the fine print. Because if we, the citizens, can find all this stuff out, you as our county commissioner should also know it. Okay. And that's all my questions. Okay. Thank you for your questions. Um, yes, ma'am, you can certainly give that to, uh, to Ms. Weaver. Um, all of the, uh, the issues that you are raising, um, even concerning the hiring of attorneys, all of that is, is, is according to protocol uh, there. And so um, we're, we're pleased with the process and we're, we're anticipating the, uh, the uh, new attorney uh, and our existing attorney uh, having the, uh, the time together that they need to, um, to transition smoothly. 
Okay, we'll take those other questions up and we do have your contact information. Are there any other citizens that care to speak that have not filled out our public meeting uh, comment card? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. John Spells, 106 Citrus Lane. I got some pictures I want y'all, because I, I hate to come in here and talk about this. All right, sir. Tell us what we're looking at, Mr. Spell. Okay, I'm looking at the quality of work that y'all done on 17 between Beck and the car clinic, the car automotive, whatever it is. But you know, I look at um, for that much equipment just to clean a ditch really that don't create a volume of water is to me is really an overbite. And to put St. Augustine grass in that area, St. Augustine grass is a high maintenance grass. By within the next six to seven months, that grass will be dead and the old original grass will come up. But you look at the money that you actually spend of putting all those those um, pallets of grass down there for just a small area. And I ride on the opposite side of 17 down Palm Meadow and all of those streets where the weeds and the bushes and stuff just grow. You know, it don't make sense. Just like I just come off of Lewis Bry. Where this gentleman stay, you got potholes right in front of his house where they keep dumping that old shell based stuff. It do not compact and stay. They got water holes. You got grass and bushes growing over the sidewalks. You ride down the other streets, you got bushes and grass just covering the sidewalk, but you can take that much manpower and put in one area, even to the point there was some stumps, I believe y'all also grinded in that area, but why is just certain areas getting the quality work and everybody else get just a weed eater and two guys knock the bushes down and throw the, the um, stuff to the side, and, and but then you go there and you do such a perfect job. I have a problem of understanding why certain areas only get work done in a certain way. I just come through East Palaka, the guys over there, they're starting to mow. I look at it, they make one path along the road. Why they're not cutting all the way down to the ditch? Okay, uh, Mr. Spell, uh, on this particular project, uh, on grant projects, they have specifications. And when you have specifications, then you follow those specifications, especially if the county is serving as the contractor and you have either state grant or federal grant, and it's certainly not just a ditch digging operation there. It has a whole lot to do with a FEMA uh, project that dates back uh, just a few years. So perception is reality. We're not doubting uh, what you uh, are seeing and the pictures that you're bringing. But again, I humbly ask that on these specific projects, give public works an opportunity to explain exactly what their interpretation is of what you're seeing and what reality is. And then when there is a discrepancy between the two, we do not have any problem at all with you enlightening us and bringing us in the loop on it. But this project just specifically uh, is a project that the county basically is following the grant specs because again, check and balance audit, all of those things are required. The department again is, 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 is working through uh, some transitions and also uh, enhancing uh, the services that we're providing and we're asking for the patience of all of our citizens as they continue to uh, enhance uh, what they do on a daily basis. And so uh, we're, we're seeing improvements uh, in the efficiency of the department and it does take a little minute for all of our citizens to really appreciate it. But thank you for bringing this to our attention. I got one more question. Yes, Being you mentioned it. Okay, you take right in Bard and I see they for the last eight months, they constantly go up there and dump that shell base right at the bridge. And every time it rained, they put a little homemade little runoff spot there. But every time they dump that stuff down, it washes it right into the creek. Okay, on the left-hand side, they cut the shoulders of the road down, didn't put no grass there. The last rain we had been washing that dirt right down the hill. It's just a constant going out there, band-aiding it. As soon as you get a rain, you go back, you dump some more. You know, it's got to be a better way than just keep dumping you no know, taxpayers' money into the creek down there. And your observations are not falling on deaf ears. I believe that one of our commissioners and public works was out there as late as yesterday. 
Uh, yes, sir. Uh, myself and the new engineer, Mr. Nimitz, was out there, and he took a dozen pictures or more and cited several issues that he thought were very fixable, and he is on top of it. This was yesterday morning. I was out there with Mr. Key, who owns the grocery store there, um, and we went over the whole thing, and he he's put the, the wheels rolling. Okay. Uh, so don't put there is a plan, but thank you again, uh, Mr. Spells, for your observations. Any other citizens that care to speak, come state your name and address for the record. Good morning. My name is Roxana Regan Weeks for Loring Streets in Augustine, Florida. Um, the fact that you brought up civility is an interesting timing today because that's what I'm here about. I had uh, done three months of work, my associates and I in St. Augustine, about providing you building plans, sites, different things along, you know, the land that the county already owns about moving the AC facility, the animal control facility. Mm -hmm. um, I made my agenda request. I received a call from Ms. Lassiter on your behalf, Commissioner Flagg, that said you wanted me to go to the Animal Control Advisory Board and give them the presentation. And then if they recommended I come before the BOCC, I, I would. Uh, you may not remember, but I do coming before this board months ago telling you that that AC advisory board is truly non-existent. They, they were not created by the, by the county. They do not have term limits. I asked at that time that uh, members from each municipality, you know, come and create a board. And um, there was an email that was sent the next week to me that said there would be the five uh, representatives from each municipality, a representative from the police department, a representative from the sheriff's department, a vet, a chairman, I mean a uh, county commissioner, and two citizens at large. And I thought that's great, that's perfect, that's the board we need, and nothing's happened since. So why you would send me back in front of a non-existent board with no authority, no advisory powers, to see what I have to say before this board I don't understand. Okay, let me help you understand. First of all, I did not say that they had to approve anything. I said- It was stated in an email to me that it was for a recommendation to come before the BOCC. Okay. All right, now if you listen to me, I gave you the respect of listening to you, mm -hmm. and then we can leave here with some understanding. Mm -hmm. I made it precisely clear that if you would go through that particular process, not a mandate, it was a recommendation that you would go before the existing uh, animal control advisory, the existing mm -hmm. one. Everyone who knows recognizes that the, quote, animal control advisory board, based on not just what you recommend, but based on what it ought to be, is a work in progress. It would be nice if it was already in place. Since it's not in place, there's a process and a procedure to get it in place. That is in the works, in spite of you thinking nothing has been done. Secondly, if you would be willing uh, to at least follow some recommended guidelines, we can still hit a home run and then we win. But because of a lack of your, 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 your patience, it's been tested in other arenas. And then when we recommend some things to you and it does, it's not just what you want, then all of a sudden you go in shutdown mode. Whether they agreed with you or not, all we asked you to do was to go through that process leading to here so that it would be vetted. That's all, Ms. Weeks. And it, nothing at no point in time precludes you or any other citizen from coming before the Board of Commissioners. You're here right now. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's, it's nothing that's between you and us other than it was a simple request for you to do that. If you don't want to do that, guess what? You don't have to. Mm -hmm. Bring your presentation to the Board of Commissioners. I wasn't put on the agenda. You were not put on the agenda and it's not a surprise to you because mm -hmm. you know why you were not put on the agenda. We ask all of our citizens who are going through the process of being on this agenda to give us information so that we can properly, just like again, every impromptu citizen that come before us, it's not are reasonable to expect us to be able to give you facts and figures and details and things of that nature. I wasn't asking you for facts and figures. Okay, 
I you was, and I are I was not told. going back and forth. Miss Weeks, we're not going to do that. I'm not going to engage you like that. Okay. If you have any further discussion, please do so at this time. Okay. I was not. I was asked to submit a list of questions that I was going to ask. It, I wasn't asking anything. I was bringing you a presentation. Okay. Okay. And the other thing is, is that um, there is no civility here. I see this pledge of civility right in front of me about being respectful, and I just don't see that happening here. And I will tell you that when I was outside this morning, um, like I said, my, my people and I in St. Augustine and, and several other animal rescues have worked on this for months, and believe me, I'm not in shutdown mode. I'm in anything but shutdown mode about this county now. And the thing is, is we just get run around in circles. I have contradicting emails, flat out lies, told one thing on a phone conversation, something else in an email, here's something else here. It's all contradictory, and yet I see no action. I do not know why. I talked to the mayor of Palaka about this numerous times, about uh, appointing a designation from the city of Palaka, and I do not know why he's never even been contacted three months after I've been here about this. So I don't know what your protocols are, but they're terribly slow. The other thing is that outside this morning, Mr. Sammons was telling some other man, he couldn't see me behind the wall there where I'm standing there, and he's telling this other man, oh, Roxanne said she was going to be on the agenda today. She lied. I don't appreciate this type of behavior. It's, it's immature. You know, I can certainly bring forth all the lies I know have been told, and that's exactly what I'm going to start doing. I don't need to come before you anymore and tell you about what you should do at AC. If you don't have the common sense, you're not going to get it anyway. Ms. Thank Weeks, you. Thank you so very much for coming, and we look forward to the future. Any other uh, comments? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. I would just like to speak on or have some questions on consent number J. Okay. When that comes up. All right, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will close the public comment section of our meeting. We will move to uh, number five, consent agenda. Uh, there are uh, a couple of um, issues that we do try to elaborate on and drill down on for the benefit of, of our citizens. Uh, the commissioners all have opportunity to meet with administration prior to all of our meetings uh, to make sure that they have clarification uh, on each of these issues. So at this time, I would like to uh, consult the commissioners about any other issues in addition to Jay that you would like for us to uh, pull uh, for additional explanation or discussion. Mr. Chairman, uh, item H, please. H. I'd like to pull item C. C. I have none, Mr. Chair. I have none. Okay. Item A, list of committee minutes recommendation distributed to become part of the record. B, list of correspondence distributed to become part of the record. C, administration general fund budget amendment resolution $9,063 to record revenue and allow expenditure of PetSmart Charities Incorporated grant to animal services. D, is request for waiver policy prohibiting use of alcohol at fairgrounds doing clerk's employee benefit. E, general services list of surplus inventory. F. Resolution including improvements to Johnson Community Park in fiscal year 2016 capital improvement plan for FERDAP grant application. G. Administration declare surplus authorized solicitation of sealed bids for 119 Bush Street, Melrose H. Public Works, FDOT, LAP agreement for design of County Road 20A, $10,000, County Road 20A from State Road 20 East of Hawthorne to State Road 20 West of Hawthorne. I, Public Works, FDOT, Traffic Signal Maintenance and Compensation Agreement, $81,016, incorporating recent acceptance of the Pomona Park, Flash and Beacon. J, Bid Award, Watson Civil Construction Incorporated, $1,077,115, U.S. 17, Water Main Relocation River Road to Central Avenue Project. At this time, we will have this explanation on Item C, um, Administration General Fund Budget Amendment Resolution. That's me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to point out, um, really as a matter of just bringing it to your attention, um, we received a grant for $9,063 from PetSmart. Yes, ma'am. And um, that 
animal services has had a tremendous challenge uh, and this one issue was to help us with um, the acquisition of a 54 dogs and 15 cats that we had in an enforcement and a hoarding situation and I just think it's great when uh, a company comes forward and helps a county and that we we reached out for that and that that's helping us and um, I just didn't want it to just be swept under the rug I think hooray for pet smart I agree and uh, for this issue big hooray okay. did you want to add um, only that the, the total amount of the grant is eleven thousand sixty three dollars we got a two thousand dollar in kind contribution from uh, two or three stores wasn't it Brian that four three okay and uh, that's also above the nine thousand sixty three so so there's there's light at the end of the tunnel we got leashes and bowls and food and uh, they really came through they really did that's good. so with that I'd like to recommend approval of redundancy second okay all right uh, thank you very kindly we're gonna hit them all at one time if you okay. uh, no problem ma'am but thank you so very much let's now have an explanation uh, provided uh, on item H for the uh, FDOT uh, lap agreement for design of County Road uh, 20A uh, do you want Public Works to uh, come forward I just good morning good morning no, we're good just Thank All right. This the item uh, actually was an interesting uh, situation. The, the Department of Transportation came to us with an idea. They have funds that they allocate for safety projects uh, throughout the district, the 18 counties, and they selected Cayuga Road for a safety upgrade uh, because of a lot of issues with, with the striping being worn off the road and vehicles leaving the road uh, because of improper markings or not enough markings. So they asked us if we would oversee a project, uh, they would be actually hiring the contractor and we would just oversee the contractor to design a safe uh, situation out there on Cayuga Road. And that uh, our part of it is just to do the, the overseeing of the project through the LAP program, the local agency pro project program. Okay. Don, Mr. is Yes, Don, is this going to be just a striping issue on Cayuca? Are they going to widen the road or put any more improvements on the road? Or? As part of the design, that could be included, but we don't anticipate widening of the road. Uh, signage would be included as well, because uh, they did talk to us about some of the curbs, about putting additional signage there to get people's attention as they go around the curbs. Okay. One last thing. Uh, we, uh, we talked about moving the striping off of Cayuca since the state was doing it over to County Road 315 right. South. Has that been done? Right. Yes, okay, it has. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lago. Thank you. I just wanted to ask Don, and, and I've congratulated your department before for becoming LAP certified, and if you could explain the time it saves us on these kind of projects that the state has enough confidence in our engineering department that they'd let us perform these kind of duties with money, might I add. Uh, it, it's not as much that it saves us time, but what it does, it gives us money. Yeah. Uh, because the Department of Transportation has actually more funds than they can administer throughout the district. So they look to local agencies, can they administer projects for them and spend the, the DOT dollars on projects. So because we are LAP certified, we get extra funding to be able to do projects like this that some of the other counties and municipalities within the district would not receive. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. Uh, item J, uh, the bid award for Watson Civil uh, Construction, the U.S. 17 Waterman Relocation uh, River Road to Central Avenue uh, project. Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, sir. Troy Hayes uh, from the uh, consulting firm of Joint Jones Evans uh, is present, and uh, his his firm has received the bids, and they have uh, formulated a recommendation for award, which is contained in your agenda, and, and he's, he's present, and we'll be happy to give you a summation on the bid. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Um, again, um, just, just an overview of that, and then we will find out if there were some other questions after you give us that synopsis. Yeah, FDOT is widening US-17, and uh, the drainage issues that they're putting in. Get, yeah, right. come into the mic just pull, to pull it right up there to you. Right. Yeah, FDOT is widening US 17 uh, along the corridor there. 
um, south of where it's currently four lanes. Uh, the issue for Putnam County was we have the new water main that was installed back in 2007, and it's in all of their drainage dishes. Uh, so we need to relocate that. That's what this project was for. Uh, we did the design. It was all funded through FDOT. The county got approval from that uh, for them to fund it, and uh, we bid it. Watson Civil was a low bid, and actually uh, it was very good for the county. Watson Civil has actually won the bid to do the road widening, so there won't be any delay claims. They will uh, be moving the pipeline as they... Uh, uh, see fit when they need to do it that will re reduce any li reduce the liability greatly to the county of holding up FTOT's project um, they were the low bid considerably they wanted the project rather than having another contractor out there working alongside them it will make the pro whole project go smoother and uh, that's where we sit with it right now okay thank you very kindly mr. Haven did you have some specific questions sir Rick Haven, 115 Data Circle. He answered some of my questions. My first one was, why was there such a disparity between the two bids? And because he's working, doing the road crew as well, and doing the road work as well. Uh, I suppose the only other question is, why didn't the other six contractors even submit a bid? Why did that? There were, altogether, there were eight contractors that were solicited, correct? And. You can answer that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's actually at the pre-bid meeting we had 13 contractors there was I believe 12 that had purchased plans for it and uh, actually Watson Civil being there uh, they made it known that they were going to bid on it that essentially made it not worth a lot of contractors time we got a very good price from Watson Civil because they were going to be there their mobilization was low compared to what another company could compete with and that's essentially why we got only the All two right. bids on it thank you yes. mm -hmm. certainly okay thank you very kindly yes sir uh, Mr. Hayes, that was yes. kind of the question I had was what was a million dollar difference there and that kind of worried me, but I fully understand now. Mm. I wouldn't want somebody messing up my side of the cake either if I'm building the cake up. So um, I appreciate your hard work and your diligence on this very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, just before you leave, we have another citizen wanting to speak, Mr. Tim Hotelling. How are you doing, sir? Tim, Tim, Tim Hotelling. Just a quick question. Why were those lines in the drainage ditch to begin with? Did, was there not a right-of-way already established that said that they were going to widen that? Uh, yes. uh, th there was a right-of-way, and when we installed them in 2007, we went to FDOT because they already had in the works plans to widen the road, and at that time, they were not in their plans for the drainage ditch. On subsequent redesigns, and even that's the same place where our water line is, that's also where Crescent City's gas is. There's a whole lot of utilities that are having to be relocated from the same issue. But to know, we did go to FDOT back when the water system was built and the water line to verify that. However, their design changed. So you put it in a ditch and they moved the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you very kindly. Any further questions? Hearing none, we at this time, I'd like to entertain a motion to accept the move, consent move. agenda. We have a proper motion. Second. 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 Further discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Item six has been uh, pulled from the agenda uh, because there has to be a prerequisite of a meeting with the representative from Bethel and the Chamber of Commerce. So we will move to item seven, um, public hearing ordinance amending the expiration of local option gas tax ordinance. Please be aware of the fact that this ordinance is only designed to change an expiration date. No, uh, we've uh, gone through the uh, proper procedures uh, here and uh, our administrator will shed some light on that. Yeah, it, this is advertised for 955, Mr. 955, Chairman. we will, at this particular point in time, we will go on recess. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. We've never gotten them all early before having six, really. <laughs> no. Ah. Didn't know what to do. The recess was right on time. Okay, so we're reconvening right on time. Item seven, it is a public hearing and the ordinance is amending the expiration of local option gas tax ordinance. Do need to uh, say to, to each of us for the benefit of, of, of our citizens that back in May of this year, the board adopted an ordinance extending the four cent local option gas tax and the two cent local option gas tax through August 31st, 2045. The Department of Revenue, after the fact, uh, has requested that the ordinance be amended so that the taxes will expire on December 31st of 2044 uh, because the Department of Revenue is in the process of amending various rules and they want all local option gas taxes to 
uh, ex expire at the same time so that there is um, unanimous uh, dates uh, throughout, uh, throughout the states for this particular tax. Uh, Mr. Leary, do you have anything else to add? I, I don't think there is much more to add than that. that we're, we're, this is merely a, an action taken in response to a request from the Department of Revenue. Mr. Castleberry has had conversation with them and has prepared the ordinance uh, in accordance with that, with that conversation and with that request. Thank you so much, Mr. Leary. Uh, again, uh, more of a housekeeping type of issue, but this is a public hearing, and the public hearing is hereby open for any of our citizens who would like to speak. Hearing none, seeing none, we will close the public hearing. Uh, commissioners, what is your pleasure? So move approval yep. of the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> you wanna do it or you want me to? No, you already, you already done it. <laughs> so Second. move approval of uh, changing the ordinance to read December 31st, 2044. Thank you very kindly. We have a proper motion and a second on the floor uh, to comply. Uh, with adopting this ordinance as presented uh, with the tax expiration date. Council, anything to add? No, sir. Okay. You've had time to consider. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you very kindly for understanding the simplicity of what was necessary. Okay. We have about three, three minutes. minutes. <laughs> Why don't we jump down we, the agenda, uh, Mr. Chair? All right. Uh, we could uh, maximize those three minutes and go to uh, some appointments and see how we're doing in that area. Mr. Libel. Um, I don't have anyone yet. If anybody is interested in serving on the Better Place Plan Committee in District 2, I will entertain that thought. Okay, we'll put it out there that we have a District 2 vacancy, must reside in that district, That's right. uh, and please contact District 2 uh, Commissioner Chip Libel. Uh, also, I'd like to, on the next one, the Zoning Board of Adjustment, one appointment. At large served uh, Claude Tilton for a very, very long time. He served very honorably, and just I want to thank him publicly for his service. Certainly, I think a letter of acknowledgement would certainly be uh, appropriate, and we can make that happen. Okay. Can you describe where District 2 is? People don't know where District do 2 is. Do you know where? Do I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> no, we go from the north uh, county line, US 17 north. We run, let's draw a line to the hospital, and then back through uh, to Lundy Road and into the city just a tad on Palm Avenue and back out 20 to the hospital. And west, my district. And west to Barden Road. That's right, west of Arden Road. Okay. All right, it's good that you know those boundaries. No, east of Arden Road. East, Barden. Yeah. Well, west to the Barden Road, yes. is what I said. Going west, but east of. East yeah. of, All right. correct. All right, we'll get the engineer to settle that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, any other appointments? All right, uh, let's be mindful um, of the fact that uh, the uh, Affordable Housing Advisory Committee uh, that appointment uh, is recommended uh, to stay uh, as an employer representative uh, at large, and the aim is to actually have a corporate um, representative uh, there and the uh, Zoning Board of Adjustment. So that is an at large, so our citizens can certainly contact any of us and we can uh, move forward. <coughs> Okay, let us uh, move forward now to item eight, planning and development services, uh, public hearings. Uh, we have uh, PUD 15-001, revision of the PUD approval, NR 97-16, blank 1177, South Highway 17, Satsuma, page 144 in your packet. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, this is a revision of uh, an existing PUD that was approved back in 1997. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, uh, Car Kirk and Camilla Blank came in and wanted to revise the existing PUD to add light manufacturing to make roof panels. In the original plan unit development agreement, there was a clause in it that indicated that any change to the PUD would require sign off by other owners uh, <coughs> of the PUD or their successors. 
uh, staff discussed this with Mr. Blank and indicated that uh, we weren't sure that, uh, that it was legal, but if it, it, but it was possible that it would, uh, that the other owners would, uh, could block the amendment. Uh, he asked what would be the worst case scenario if the, uh, if the other owner did so. Uh, staff indicated that uh, the case would be denied and uh, he wouldn't get his rezoning. Uh, he said to go ahead and, and do that. Uh, at the March 11, 2015 hearing before the Planning Commission, uh, the neighbor did bring up the clause. Uh, staff at that time indicated that we weren't sure that the uh, issue was a, a legal condition or not and asked the Planning Commission to continue the case to allow us and Russ Castleberry, the county attorney, to research the legality of it. Uh, the Planning Commission did continue the case. Mr. Castleberry and I uh, attempted to find out uh, if this would be a legal clause in rezoning or not. We could not find <coughs> much either way on it, uh, so staff uh, felt that they were obligated to honor that clause. That was, and so at the uh, July 8th, 2015 public hearing for the Planning Commission, uh, as you can see, it's a very small part property uh, just before uh, where 309 comes in this Highway 17. Um, the Planning Commission recommended that the amendment be denied. Are there any questions by the board? Do we have anyone uh, here in reference to Kirk and Camilla Blank, the case put 15-001? Is there anyone here that's a party to this or a concerned citizen? This is a public hearing. We're giving opportunity for anyone to come and to speak uh, concerning the recommendation Close to public hearing, open commission discussion and deliberations. Are there any ex parte communications? District 1? No. District 2? No. District 4? No. District 5? No. District 3? No. We have a recommended action to concur with the recommendation of the Planning Commission and deny the request. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion that we follow the recommendation of our staff and deny the request, sir. Proper motion. Second. Second. Discussion. At time to consider. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item B, R15-005, zoning map amendment from plan unit development to R2, Cox, Corbett Road, Palatka. Good morning, Harris Burns K.O. Plan Development Services. Good morning, sir. Uh, R15-005, the applicant is Karen Cox. The applicant is requesting a zoning map amendment from PUD to R2 for one parcel mounting in 3.03 located uh, acres located along State Road 20 in Palaka. The parcel is currently PUD. The future land use designation for the property is Urban Reserve. There is a mobile home and a storage building located on the subject parcel. So let's go over the maps. Uh, you could see the uh, subject parcel of this aerial uh, outlined in blue. Uh, future land use uh, is urban reserve. It's uh, ubiquitous out there. Um, there's a little bit of urban service to the northwest and there's a uh, municipal boundary to north as well. And then you could see the PUD designation for the uh, subject parcel. And then uh, it's in an area of ag and then there's commercial strip to the north along State Road 20. Uh, so talking about comprehensive plan consistency, when staff is looking to recommend for rezoning, we look at comprehensive plan consistency. It's in urban reserve, future land use. Urban reserve is uh, typically designated for areas that border municipal areas or urban service areas. Um, this has a wide variety of uses, including residential. Uh, PUDs are typically for mixed use. That's what the prior intent of the PUD, but the applicant has decided that they would like to go to a more res uh, to a sole residential use. And the R2 designation for which the applicant would like to be, or the proposed designation uh, is consistent with the urban reserve feature land use. So that being said, the applicant proposes to rezone the subject parcel from PUD to R2. The proposed rezoning is consistent with the comprehensive plan and land development code. Staff recommends approval, and the planning commission also recommends approval. 
thank you so very kindly for your presentation. Are there any representatives uh, from the Karen Cox family on this case? Do you have questions, sir? No, sir. Okay. And your name? John Cox. John Cox. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Um, no comment and no questions or no concerns. If there are no other citizens that uh, need to share with us, then we will close the public hearing. Commissioner, deliberations. Move approvals from Planning Commission recommendations. Second. Mr. Chair. We do have a proper motion and second on the table. I need to confer as to whether there has been any ex parte communications. District 1? No. District 2? No. District 4? No. District 5? None. District 3? None. We have a proper motion and a second. Uh, with the disclosure of no ex parte communications, uh, we have a recommended action. Uh, we've had time to consider. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, like saying? Hearing none, motion carries. We will move to the next case, R15-006, Zoning Map Amendment Ag and R1A2 Ag, Redfern 151D Lake Trail, Mail Rose. Mr. Uh, Harris Burns Cattle Plan Development. Uh, this is R15-006. First, I would like to point out an error in the staff report. Uh, on the first page, under site description and background, it stated that the site has a mobile home on the premise as an error. Uh, it does not have a mobile home and is va largely vacant. There is a um, unfinished accessory dwelling or accessory structure out there. Okay, is that in the summary highlights that you're referring to? The summary? No. It, well, yes, it might be in the summary highlights as well. Oh, we see it. But, but it's in the staff report for sure. Okay. Staff report, page one. Uh, so at any rate, the applicant is Michael S. Redfern. Uh, the applicant is requesting zone map amendment from a split zoning of AG and R1A to AG for 56.01 acre, acres of property near uh, State Road 21 in Melrose. The western portion of the property is zoned R1A and the remaining easterly portion is zoned AG. The future land use designation of the property is A2. And then we go into the maps, and you could see the aerial. Um, there's, you could see that there's a residential subdivision to the northwest, uh, but it's largely vacant to the, uh, to the east and south. Um, you can see the future land use. Where there's a large amount of A2 out there. The subdivision to the north is uh, rural residential. To the south uh, is conservation, and to the east there is a uh, mining future land use. And then in the zoning map, you can see the um, R1A towards Lakeside, and then AG, and AG is the predominant uh, zoning district out in that area, aside from the uh, subdivision to the north, which is R2, or R1A, I mean. So again, comprehensive plan consistency. Uh, they're in a future land use of AG2, which is primarily um, an agricultural designation, however, residential is allowed in that area. Um, the R1A designation is consistent with A2, um, and the AG designation is consistent with A2. The property owner would like to be able to operate uh, or have AG designation on, on their, the entirety of their property rather than just the, the western portion. The applicant proposes to rezone the subject parcel from a split zoning designation of AG to AG and R1A to AG. This rezoning would rid the subject parcel of R1A designation, enabling the applicant to utilize all of their property under the AG zoning district. Staff recommends approval for the proposed rezoning as it is consistent with the comprehensive plan and land development code, and the planning commission has also recommended approval. Thank you so much for your staff presentation. This is a public hearing and it is open. Are there any representatives uh, for this particular case? The Red Fern case. Here. All right, sir. Do Michael Mr. Michael Redfern, do you have any commentation or uh, commentary related to this case? Yes, you, this right now is uh, a certified tree farm. Yes, sir. Are you in agreement with the recommendation that is before us? Do you agree or disagree with the recommendation that is before us? Yes. You agree? Okay. All right, just wanted to make sure that the record reflect that you are here, Mr. Redfern. Are there any other citizens, uh, nearby friends, or neighbors that are here concerning this case? Seeing none, hearing none, we will close uh, the public hearing part of this case. We will come to our commissioners and inquire about ex parte communications. District 1? 
None. District two. None. District four. None. District five. None. District three. None. This time we will go into commissioner commissioner deliberations and comments for Mr. this chairman. Case. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion that we approve case R15-006 based on planning commission recommends approval and staff recommends approval. Okay, we have a proper motion on the floor. Second. Second. I kind of had me nervous there for a minute. <laughs> okay, proper motion and a second. Further discussion? We had time to consider. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Item D under planning and development services R-15-007, <coughs> zoning map amendment from C-2 to C-3, the Gilbert case, 1109 North State Road 19, pull out to page 199 in your pack. R-15-007, uh, the applicant is Vernon E. Gilbert. The applicant is requesting a zoning map amendment from C-2 to C-3 for a 0.93 acre subject parcel located along State Road 19 in Palaka. The subject parcel is in C2 zoning district. The future land use designation for the property is urban service. Uh, there is an auto repair shop located on the subject parcel dating back to um, 1986, according to tax assessor records. Um, so we'll discuss the maps. You can see this is an aerial um, uh, uh, depicting it along State Road 19. You can see the largely urban service future land use out there. There's a couple commercial land use uh, designations to the south. Um, along State Road 19, you can also see that there's a large amount of, um, there's C3 to the north, and then there's also C2, and then C3 to the south. Uh, and then there's a large amount of residential to the east, and then ag to the west. So again, comprehensive plan consistency is what we're looking for. Uh, the urban service area, um, is a, is a designation that is for places that have urban type infrastructure or will have urban type infrastructure within the next 10 years. There is a multitude of different uses that are allowed within the urban service area. Um, the commercial has to fit within certain uh, locational standards and uh, infrastructure uh, and percentage qualities. They, this property meets all those. Uh, it currently is commercial, so we're not adding to the 25% total land area, and uh, and the strip pattern is not an impact because it's already commercial. Uh, and then it meets the locational standards because the uh, 19 corridor is an arterial, which is higher than a collector, um, and it doesn't go through a residential neighborhood, causing non-residential uh, vehicular traffic impact on a residential neighborhood. So at any rate, the C2, both C2 and C3 are consistent with urban service area. Um, and here are the uses, highway oriented use is the use that the applicant is going for, which is auto repairs under that. That's, ba that's the primary um, addition to what it is allowed in C2. The applicant proposes to rezone the subject parcel from C2 to C3. The subject parcel is located on a principal arterial, State Road 19. The proposed rezoning is consistent with the comprehensive plan and land development code. Staff recommends approval and the planning commission recommended approval as well. Thank you so much, sir. This is a public hearing. It is hereby open uh, to anyone who have an interest in the case. Is there anyone here to speak or representing the Gilbert case? Do you have any objections or any questions, sir? Your, your name for the record? Vernon Gilbert. Gilbert. Thank you for being here, sir. Any other citizens care to speak? Hearing none, the public hearing is hereby closed. Commissioners, on this particular case, R-15-007, District 1, any ex parte communication? No. District 2? None. District 4? No. District 5? No. District 3? No. This time, commissioners, what is your pleasure? Indicated. What are your pleasures? Mr. Chairman, yes, move approval of staff recommendation. We have a proper motion for I'll approval second of that. Uh, staff and planning board recommendation. Proper motion and second. Further discussion? Now, I consent. have one for Mr. Gilbert. Okay. And my memory serves me right. You've been there since the 60s. Very long time, way past 85. <laughs> was that your father that was there before? You were the only business on Highway 19 at one time. Congratulations. <laughs> Glad yep. to help you. Kept my <laughs> junk going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were. You were the only one out there. 
<laughs> all right, we have a proper motion and second. Uh, if no further discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Like sign, hearing that, motion carries. Item 8E. R15-008 zoning map amendment from R2 to AG, total property 148 12th Street interlocking, page 209 in your packet. R15-008, the applicant is Jack Tuttle. The applicant is requesting a zoning map amendment from R2 to AG uh, for one parcel amounting in 10.01 acres located in West Putnam County. The subject parcel is an R2 zoning district, a future land use designation for the property is A1. The property is vacant. The applicant plans on using the land for a borough area. The rezoning, is a, rezoning of the property to ag is the first step in the process towards that end. So let's go over the maps. Um, you can see that the subject parcel is largely vacant and it's in a largely vacant area. You can see that there's a, a bar area pit to the west of the subject parcel. That sub, uh, special use permit was recently revoked. Um, there is residential to the southwest. Um, there are about six uh, parcels that you can or six residential units that you can see in the aerial um, uh, it's the future land use is a1 out there and then the property to the west is ag and then the rest of it is r2 so again comprehensive plan consistency the uh, agriculture one district is primarily for agricultural uses intensive agricultural use which the bar area pit fits in uh, is allowed in that future land use designation. Um, the both both the R2 and agricultural zoning districts fit within the future land use designation of agriculture one. It is the applicant's desire to propose uh, agricultural zoning district. Um, here are the primary uses and ag uses. However, the bar area is a special use permit. They will need to apply for a special use permit to be able to obtain that use. Uh, the applicant proposes to rezone the subject parcel from R2 to AG. The proposed rezoning is consistent with the comprehensive plan and land development code. Staff recommends approval and the planning commission recommends approval as well. Thank you very kindly. I think Mr. Total was here much earlier and he still is here. Good morning. Mr. Total, do you have any commentary on this issue? Do you have any objection to the recommendation that's before us? Thank you so much for being here. Let the record reflect Mr. Tuttle is uh, present, has no objections to what's being discussed. This is a public hearing. Are there any citizens that needs to speak concerning this issue? Close the public hearing at this time. Commissioners, District 1, any ex parte communication? No. District 2? No. District 3? No. District 4? <laughs> no. District 5? No. Caught okay. me off guard. Yeah, caught me off guard a little bit too. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is the pleasure of the Commission? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move approval of case number R15-008. And a second. Proper motion and a second. We have time to consider, ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you again for being here. Item F. Text Amendment 15-001 to the Traffic Circulation Element of the Comprehensive Plan, page 220 in your packet. Good uh, morning, Mike sir. Brown, Planning Manager, P Planning and Development Services. TA 15-001 is a county-initiated text amendment to the Traffic Circulation Element of the Adopted Comprehensive Plan. This is the first hearing, the transmittal hearing. Uh, all comp plan amendments require transmittal. First, for count to the state and regional agencies for review and receive comments, and then we'll come back to you um, for adoption. Um, and this is a lot of this is is I'll reference it as as really cleanup. Um, the changes all re primarily relate to one. Re the big one is renaming the traffic circulation element to the transportation element, um, and updating. Um, the level of service on multi-lane principal arterials and on Florida Interstate Highway System and Strategic Intermodal System roadways consistent with um, changes in FDOT standards. Um, we also are re deleting all references to 9J5 Florida Administrative Code. That code no longer exists um, due to legislative changes and then we are also updating um, date, we had some old dates in, in a number of the policies and, and other changes to um, administrative code references 
um, consistent with the legislative and rule changes over the past uh, really five years. Um, staff and the Planning Commission recommended recommending to you to authorize transmittal to the reviewing agencies of 15 TA 15-001. Any questions? This, um, Mike, where do the, the, uh, these uh, transmittals go to now besides the Regional Planning Council? The Department of Economic Opportunity? Goes it goes, to? yeah, we will send it to all the state agencies um, and um, and the regional, the regional council still gets it, and our, all the adjoining counties and municipalities within the county. All of them will receive a copy of it. And so our neighbors get a shot at it. Make any comments. This is good for economic development for us. More traffic count. Yeah. Good stuff. They change uh, every time we have a new governor, it seems like. Yeah, it, no, it's, it's gotten better than it was previously under other administrations. This is a public hearing. Do we have any comments or concerns from our citizens? Close the public hearing. Commissioner, continue in um, comments, feedback. I just did mine. You did good. <laughs> Mr. Brown, I have one, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Is all of our roads in Putnam County at a level B now? Will that? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. So there won't, there, is there any on the verge of being we, um, as I've, I think I've brought up to the, to the commission before, staff has a concern with, um, now let me jump back to your question. Um, I answered yes, the level of service is adopted if, with this, with these changes, all the level of service that's adopted will be D. Many of our roads are operating at B, C, or, or A. Um, so that, that I just wanted to correct your first okay. my response to your first question. Um, staff does have a concern, and we're keeping an eye on um, one segment of State Road 26 from Alachua County to State Road 21 in the Melrose area. A lot of those aren't impacts resulting from Putnam County, right? But we get we get to deal with them. They're primarily coming from Alachua County, but we're we have we're keeping an eye on it because that is getting close um, based on the last counts that we we took the county takes our own counts in that area and um, the last year's counts it's close in, within 10 percent of going of hitting triggering the uh, level of service we're pretty much we're open for business everywhere else, including that area, correct? Pardon? We're pretty much open for business to come in. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Good. Thank Fair. you. Yes, sir. Mr. Brown, on that same highway segment you're talking about, though, um, they just spent I don't know how many millions on that crossover bridge. What would be if we trip the or finish off the 10% and we go over? I mean, what did the, what's the solution? Um, well, it, we then have to deal with um, concurrency clearly kicks in and we will be dealing with individual, you know, projects as they come in to start paying their fair share. Now, one caveat I'll raise is we all know that State Road 20 is being widened and I don't know, and I believe uh, that, that may help yeah. alleviate some traffic okay. up there and we'll just have to wait and see. But that helps in, us in a way. All yeah, right. in deal. response, um, we would be dealing with you know, prop share calculations <coughs> for projects um, that are deemed to be significant from a transportation standpoint that would in adversely impact that segment. So that's the solutions. Good work, thank you. Thank you. Any additional commentation? Okay, this is the transmittal uh, hearing, um, Commissioner, so your vote today does um, move this project forward so that these text amendments get to approval the proper staff state. recommendations. Second. A proper motion and a second for approval. Additional commentation. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you again. Um, and. Um, Thank you for the thorough presentations um, that you, you have presented for all of these cases. Uh, Mr. Hammonds, uh, thank you for your leadership in that department, uh, making those things happen. We'd be remiss not to acknowledge um, our director, Larry Gass, who um, is uh, miraculously 
uh, on point, uh, not missing a beat now. Uh, there, we want him to pace himself Ooh. and uh, continue to uh, uh, to do what he does. Do you have anything to share with us today? We'd like to just know that you're doing well. <laughs> and not missing a beat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't, don't miss I beats, am, don't skip beats. I'm feeling well. I'm glad to be back to work. Um, I hope to continue to do as best I can to serve this county and to serve you as, as best I possibly can. I really want to thank everybody. It was nice to hear today from the citizens as well as from the board that, uh, you know, all the prayers were, were greatly appreciated and, and I want to thank everybody tremendously. Thank you, Larry. Glad to have you back. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for your leadership. And um, we are certainly just as much pulling for you to keep doing what you've been doing. Okay. County Administrator, Mr. Rick Leary, what else do you have for us today? I have nothing further. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Castleberry. No, sir. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> okay. We're going to talk about you then since you don't want to talk about it. Us. Okay, Mr. Jones. No items. Okay, uh, we know that our clerk was here earlier. Thank you so very much. Okay, we will move now into commissioner comments, and we will start with District One. District One doesn't have any comments at this time. Okay, District Five. Um, looking forward to the meeting tonight down in San Mateo with the DOT about their some uh, updates on their plans on the four laning project and. Hopefully that'll be coming soon to the Highway 20 area, um, connect us north and south, east and west. Um, Want to wish our attorney a very successful operation tomorrow. Hopefully, yes, sir. Um, everything go well. I, I volunteered to go in and do the cutting if he <laughs> needed me. Or he's needed that lobotomy for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely will say a prayer. <laughs> That was Anything wrong. else, District 5? <laughs> no, just look, if you can't attend uh, the thing in San Mateo this afternoon at the Duns, or at Duns Creek Baptist Church, I think it'll be very informational. Most definitely. Yeah, that project is getting ready to really take off, and we're, we're excited about that. Very uh, good. Talking about economic development, that infrastructure has yeah. to be there. Thank yeah. you so much. District 2. Um, again, uh, I, I know last meeting I thank Director Hammonds and your whole staff. Lisa Suarez was with us earlier, but... The job and the continual effort uh, at animal services and the challenges we have out there, I just want to thank you personally and public for all you're doing. This has been a really tough one, but there's a, a silver lining in it all. We're, we're making new friends and, and uh, the spotlights on animal services and where we need to improve. Also, I'd like to remind everybody, school is in. Be careful of those lights, slow down, and uh, the environment changes now through the spring to the end of May. That's it. Thank you very kindly, sir. District 4. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to give a little shout out to the Interlochen Area Rotary Club. Uh, we were picking up our trash on the side of the road on County Road 315 Saturday. Uh, got less trash than what we've had in the past, which is always a good sign. You can keep picking up less and less. So uh, the Rotary Club really shined and cleaned up that area pretty well in, in a very short period of time. Uh, the other thing I'd like to tell the audience is I have applied and received a scholarship for my accredited county commission uh, classes that I'll be taking. So it didn't cost the county any, any money whatsoever. And um, I just had to be sitting there at 10 o'clock doing the application. So um, we were able to do that, and I look forward to getting my accredited county commission. I think Mr. Vice Chairman Walton Powell here has his, and Mr. Chairman, you're one class away from my understand, so. Thank you. Stuff. Thank you very kindly. Any closing comments? Thank you all for being here and for what you do to make Putnam County better. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Have a great day.